So let's have a look at both of the lineups then. Yes. This is Bath. They include 11 of the side that beat Leicester here in the cup final. The Scottish trio of Nicol, Hilton and Peters have gone with their country to New Zealand now. So Ian Sanders, Kevin Yates and Ed Pearce all take part. Having all played at Main Road in somewhat different roles, Victor Abugu returns after a two-month absence. So Wigan select 15 today and include two men who we thought we would never see on the big stage again. 42-year-old coach Graham West and Joe Lydon, 32 years of age. They come out of retirement to play very specialist roles at lock and fly half. Our referee is Brian Campbell, chosen to officiate today because he's got a northern accent. His words, not mine. More seriously, he's under a bit of pressure to play it by the rule book. That's certainly how Bath wants it, just as was the case at Main Road under rugby league rules and this is an encouraging start from Bath early ball secured Yates takes it on and it's good ruck ball as you'd expect Adi Adebayo finds himself more days in the year center now and out on the wing oh what a start from Bath reminiscent of Wigan's play in the opening minutes of Main Road And the ball going forward. Well, they did quite well there, did Wigan. They really were on song, the bath forwards, keeping it very tight. But the mistake, the knock-on, and that is probably the only reason that Wigan will get possession early in these first 20 minutes. They've got to just wait until the mistake comes to them. That's Steve-O, this is Jamie. Yes, indeed, but this is going to be a very interesting facet of play, the scrummage situation. It is a technical department, and certainly when it comes to reality, it is a very different ball game to practice. And certainly with Victor Rubugu suddenly back in the bath frame, he will certainly relish the prospect of scrummaging today. Now, Bath have pledged that there will be no funny business up front. They will play it key, clean and keen. But look at that drive, and Wigan finding it very difficult to hold it. And it's Bath ball as they go straight over the top. This is to Glamble out to Lumsden. Try, or is it? The referee says no. He's taking it back for a five-metre scrum, saying that Lumsden didn't ground it. Well, they won it against the head bar, and very sensibly ran it wide. It was Phil to Glamble's pass, straight pass here to Lumsden, coming on the straight line. And he just didn't ground it. Good decision, Brian Campbell, but Bath should get the reward from this scrum. Good work, though, from uh, Gary Connolly. It was a tremendous ball and all tackle. And there's another drive of immense power from Bath. Sanders knows as soon as the ball's over the line, the Wigan scrum half would be able to put hands on it, but the penalty was given anyway. Of course, it's Murdoch at scrum half for Wigan in the absence of the injured Sean Edwards. There he is, and he will get a chance to put into the scrum for the first time. Gary Connolly, also a key member of this Wigan side today. Well, we've seen one against the head, and I'm sure Bath are going to go for an eight-man sharp here. Campbell probably should have given a penalty try. I thought you might say that, uh, Jamie, early in the game. <laughs> Here's Callard. Chance to counter. Oh, great run from Kellard. The tackling non-existent there from Wigan. That will be of a concern to them. Victor Abugu. Another great position for Bath. Wigan going over the top and conceding another penalty. I think they'd be quite happy to concede that penalty. They really were on the rack then. Twigamala going over the top. But surely they'll go for the points well look at the booze from the crowd say it all don't they they want to open rugby yeah but Bath very sensibly get points on the board really get three get six then the tries will come of that there's no doubt so it's Callard easy chance for him didn't have a particularly good day with the boot here in the cup final but no mistake from that range We've played four minutes, and Bath lead by three points to nil. And the signs for Wigan up front, Jamie, ominous. Yes, very much so. As I, as I mentioned, 
right at the start the technical aspect of the scrummaging is going to be very difficult for Wigan to comprehend this afternoon and certainly in areas like that like the restart here we've got now Bath should be able to secure it and take their time it was Leiden's kick and taken by Martin Hart held by Graham West but it's back to Bath again with Cat and here's Slight home this should be good against Robinson Robinson did well forced them out on the outside good defense there pretty fast is John Slight home now Bath aware that they can take the quick throw in and they got it moving and Radlitsky has to go back but that's a fine touch find from Chris Radlinski five yes. England caps for him and many more to come in rugby league but that was a good rugby union touch find yes it certainly was but well played Bath they've taken the initiative they're making the use of their experience a quick throw in from the line out now they've got their own line out here just in their own half of the 10 meter line and this will be another interesting area of the game something Wigan obviously aren't used to no line outs in rugby league and it was easy for Hogg, a comfortable catch at the front of the line-out. And now Wigan taste the rolling maul. And Bath can play it this way when they want to. They've got a good set of forwards, but they're looking to move it now with Cat. Off to Lumsden, who's coming off his wing. And again, the support was there, and they're quickly over and through, and it's slight home again. Redmond, the referee's seen the knock-on. And it's play on. Sanders. Another knock forward. This time there will be a scrum. Wiggins. Well, I think Bath have just got to be a little bit patient. It's, it's a little bit too frantic, but certainly they've got control of the possession, and... Uh, you know, as, as we see this particular move break down, it's Dick Glanville, Andy Robinson ever present once again. And Sanders just couldn't quite hold on to it. Another mistake, and that's where Wigan, they're desperate for possession. We knew that they would struggle in the scrums and the line-out. But the loose rucks and balls have been a problem for them too. Quinnell with good footballing skills, the number eight picking up from the base of the scrum but of course he's an ex-rugby union man and will be a rugby union player again next season with richmond well at least they got the ball from this scrum but i don't think it'll be long before wigan just run everything from everywhere you know with all due respect to scott Brunel, there's probably no point in kicking into touch well under so much pressure i think that wigan just want to slow things down and uh, try to get their composure maybe just sneak a bit of the possession it was Redman who won that line out. Ed Pierce now getting his chance today. In the absence of Eric Peters and Ben Clark, of course, moving on. Clark would like to have been considered, but John Hall and Brian Ashton thought Pierce was the future of the club. This is Callard. Now that's what Wigan do very well, tackling. And Callard knew all about that. Sanders, Cat, De Glanville. A little bit static there. The referee must check that the ball keeps on moving. It is doing now. Robinson lost it. But Wigan were up offside in midfield by a long, long way. And here's Martin Haag. Wigan failing to retreat 10 metres as well, but the referee prepared to let it go. No, he's going back for that. Tremendous defence, though, by Wigan. They really are making a good contest of this. Not surprisingly, we expected uh, the path forwards to keep it very tight. A little bit lenient there, Brian Campbell, as he gives the put in to Wigan and Radlinski clears this time he hasn't found touch Callard Lumsden trying to get away from Murdoch back goes Sanders he was a hooker of course in the rugby league fixture but at scrum half he lost out there a 
and a fire goes chasing through. Terry O'Connor was with him. But Bath finding some space upfield and Graham Gore needing support. Comes from Abugu. It's a nice open game. Sanders and men out wide for Bath, but Katz seeing some space in behind the midfield just gives it away to Radlinski. Bit surprised there that Radlinski didn't take the option to run with the football. He was under a lot of pressure though. Slightholm took that option. And here's Hard. The game being played in beautiful weather now, a nice spring day. This is Cat. Callard. Twigamala quickly up. And in those one on one situations, Wigan will be uh, happy to, to defend like that. Here's Stewart. Uh, bar forward started extremely well, but if I was Brian Ashton and John Hall, I'd be concerned. As Jamie says, Bath are a little over-anxious. They've almost entered into the spirit too much. Jonathan Callard nearly got Bath in trouble because he tried to counter-attack, but quite clearly what he should have been doing is driving Wigan back. This is a competitive game, and Bath mustn't get carried away because they're winning forward ball. They mustn't allow Wigan the chance. It only took a great piece of play by his captain, Phil de Glanville, to stop Wigan going into the lead against the run of play. Just to elaborate on that, Stuart, I, as you rightly say, I think that uh, Callard and Cap, there's nothing wrong with putting a couple of box kicks up, a couple of kicks up onto the fullback, put pressure on just outside the 22, make that tackle there. And obviously, the floor is, is not a, a safe haven for the league lads in this Union game, and that's where they'll be asked a lot of questions. So, just to vary the game plan a little bit more rather than play this open game, which obviously would suit Wigan. Well, they appear to me to uh, making so much possession, Bath, that uh, they're a little bit overconfident. They think that it's just going to break down the Wigan defence. But they've done well so far. We've talked about technique at the scrum. Safety is also a consideration for the referee. Here's Radlinski. Callard. Trying to go around Robinson. Never an easy option, and Callard finds touch. With a good chase and good play, they took the short one, but the referee's not happy with it. It didn't go five metres. That was the problem. Yes, but right idea by Wigan, wasn't it? Just There's no point lining all the players up. And here go Bath again, running the free kick. And trying to sap a bit of energy through the middle. But they will know that Wigan are a very fit team. Cat see some space there. Got support from Yates, and the big prop goes. Needs some support back inside. Again, the referee can't be sure that he, a try has been scored. In fact, he's pretty sure that it wasn't grounded. Yes, well, the touch charge was right there as well. There's Yates for a prop, a superb amount of ground. But once again, there's two men enveloping John Slyholm. Quite right, Brian Campbell. Good work by Scott Quinnell there. He put his body underneath. There was no chance of getting that ball grounded. Well, the defence is holding out. A brave effort. They've been under pressure so much. And that's twice now that Wigan have prevented Bath from grounding the ball over the Wigan line. But there the scrum goes down. And a little flare up there. The referee will step in. Well, this is the area that there could easily be a flare-up. Obviously, the Wigan players won't enjoy going backwards and also the pressure being put on them. And Bath calling for another scrum. Some of the Wigan players there, throwing a few burbles at the opposition. Should be uh, interesting. Of course, Bath have the option of the scrum from the penalty. This one of the aces in their pack. But Jomo is controlling at the base of the scrum. This time the Wigan front row doing well though, just to hold it for a while, but they've come up now and... Was there a foot in the scrum? The referee is going to give a penalty try. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. Well, he's made absolutely the right decision, Brian Pamps. You can't go on 
having that situation in the scrum. He's playing the rules as Tatupu and Abugu have a word about it all. And quite rightly, the Wigan players prevented that ball going across the line so Bath could have scored. And Brian Campbell was left with no option at all but to award a penalty try. And you'll find, as we see it once again, that Bath are quite happy to take this sort of game at this stage and then they can do what they want but they've got a few more points on the board. A lot of boost from the crowd though. They anticipated a little bit more action out wide. So trying to force a try so close. But it's the rugby union game. That's why they are the champions. Well, there's no harm in getting a platform. That's what Bath will say. They can spread it wide as the game goes on, but they have to do what they're good at. And here we see another effective drive from the Bath 8. And there's very little Wigan can do. You can see them all offside. There's no chance that they can stop it. Must have been a big decision, though, for the referee cancel well penalty tries are in vogue at the moment at Twickenham especially at that end of the ground Think back to the cup final here's Twigamar that's brought the crowd alive look at that tremendous run from Inga the winger as it used to be in rugby union and now Bath forced to kill it and concede a penalty, all inspired by Twigamala's run. Murdoch goes. This is Leiden. Henry Poor finds Connolly. Radlinski just couldn't hold. It might break for the Glamble and he kicks on. Robinson goes back. Good hands from Robinson. But that won't help. Here's Martin Hard. That was a bad mistake by Radlinski. They had the opening out wide. The chance was an offer there, and it was an awful kick from Robinson. Kicking the ball midfield is not what's needed. And now it's Callard. Leiden couldn't hold him. With Bath there going down a little bit of a blind alley. Yeah, strong option, wasn't it? Should have come open side, really. This is the one. Andy Robinson getting the ball back off Callar, but it's, nobody's running any pace or any great direction, and uh, Wigan very comfortably taking Bath that into touch. Stolen by Redman. Sanders in quickly. Ed Pierce trying to bulldoze on. Well done, Quinnell. The ball was clearly out, and that was legal. Now it's Henry Poor, it's Connolly. Now, will we see Connolly's pace around Lumsden? He was taken out late, surely. Penalty has been given. Well, hats off to Wigan, breaking out from the fence. It's definitely a late tackle on Gary Connolly. Quite right decision from Capsule. Good refereeing there. Tremendous stuff. But you could see the excitement from Wigan there. They mean business now. OK, they've been put on the rack, but when they get the possession, watch for the good stuff. And it was Farrell who caught that. But has he set it back? No, he hasn't. Here's Sanders. And Radlinski, unable to control Sanders' sneaky little kick. Twigamala certainly hasn't forgotten the finer points of rugby union. What presence this man had, the crowd know all about him too. That's Lumsden being brushed aside. But the problem we can have got is when they go into contact like Farrell did subsequently, they couldn't retain that ball, and that's obviously a technical problem that they're finding. They can't get the forwards working as a unit, as a pack, and making ground, but they need people to, to help. It was quite easy that they regained possession at Bath, but it was a, a lovely kick, though, over the top by Sanders. Put a lot of pressure on Radlinski. And here, the Wigan players rejoining them all must come in behind the back foot, and the referee spotted one of the Wigan forwards offside. And they're just wrapping around the tackler and preventing the ball from coming back. It's a big rule book, and it's a lot to take on board. 
Yeah, but oh dear old Graham West, age 42, he was over the top there by a mile. He's putting his body on the line. Bit of spoiling tactics there. He's, uh, he's an old stager, and in this warm weather, he really must be suffering. 42 years of age. Twigamala goes back and is forced to carry over. That will be a five meter scrum. Graham Dorr was going through. Yes, indeed, and I don't think Twigamala sort of saw him, saw him coming. Graham Dorr would have enjoyed that. Good work by the hooker. He really was quick there. Twigamala not expecting it. Here's problems though for Wigan. It's Sanders off to Callard. Hasn't got the strength to beat three or four. Wigan covering tacklers. Tremendous defence again, just short of their own line. Good work by a fire. Tremendous ball and all tackle. Well, a lot of people said that he couldn't do the tackles, but look at that. Spin him round. Well done. Tremendous stuff. Under enormous pressure, Wigan now. Quickly in from Murdoch. And the scrum half did well to get it away, but he's only found Callard. Lumsden. There's no way through there. So Sanders. Now will Bath look to move it wide? To Glanville. Cat. But offside again. The Wigan back line up too quickly. This is in front of the post, and I would have thought Callard will have a go. Yeah, I, you know, there's obviously uh, not a lot, of, a lot of sympathy for Brian Pamps the referee, but he is playing the letter of the law, which is fair enough. Well, to Bath's credit, they've started to move it, running the penalty. Yates. Again, a Wigan player on the wrong side, cleared out of the way. It's out now to Adi Anabeo. And Bath have their second try, the first one, a penalty try. That one more appealing to the eye, and Adi Adebayo is the score. Well, they sat the cover in, didn't they? And there was plenty here, Mike Pat had the first dart at it. But the Adebayo scored it, we can see two extra Bath players in support as well. Good work by Cat. you could see that he, he drew the centre, Henry Paul, Adebayo, into the gap. It had to come, the pressure, was enormous but I must say the referee from Yorkshire Brian Campbell he didn't forget the whistle today did he well no it's, it's uh, a requirement of this game Steve oh I can assure you of that <laughs> yes I'm learning very quickly but it was a beautiful pass by Cat tremendous work man coming under the football at pace pretty hard to stop and Bath's decision to run the penalty, totally justified. This is Callard now with the conversion kick. Not a good one, but Bath have a 15 point to nil lead. Well, as we see it here, let's freeze it there. You see how this man has divided Robinson, I think it is. There's Adebayo, and he's got plenty outside. Adebayo gets to the end, but look at the Bath players in support as well. So there was a, a clear four on two. Nice work, very neat indeed. They'll be happy with that with Bath. Well executed. Callard. That's Victor Bugu back in the team. Started the season with England, it all fell apart for him. Here's Stewart. Yeah, that try from Adedeo Adebayo there just illustrated Wigan's problem. Their defence is great when it's one on one in the league system, but the bar forwards are getting into the Wigan midfield and suddenly there are men over. A Jomo, that's the halfway line. But stolen by Wigan and good work, but Henry Paul with the knock on. It was Farrell who was bringing it away. It wasn't a bad pass at all. No, he should have taken that. Nerves obviously getting to the young Henry Paul. He's been around a while. But they haven't had much possession, but two bad mistakes when really they should have launched an attack. The first one was Redlinski. Now we have Henry Paul doing exactly the same. 
They certainly can't afford that, just giving away possession as here go Bath again. Slidehome. Here goes Slidehome then, he's got one to beat Redlinski. He showed him the outside and Slidehome takes the opportunity. Oh yes. He was never given the chance at Main Road, but he's taken it at Twickenham. Well, well played, John Schleinholt. He came on a different line. It's the move on the blind side. Testing Wigan's organisation. Look how straight he comes. He brushes off that first tackle of Robinson and then just takes the outside and Radlinski is nowhere near him. Good work on the blind side. It was a neat pass to Robinson. Just hesitated a little bit. And it was enough for Slito to make the gap. And he's got pace as this guy. Tremendous stuff. But it's typical, isn't it, really? The thing that Wigan have been doing to other sides in Super League is making the mistakes pay. And Bath certainly did that. Well, there's John Slito. He'll be very pleased with that finish indeed. It was the line that he took from the scrum. Now, it frees it there. That's the line he takes. Robinson just hanging off a little bit. But once he got through that, he was away. And Radinsky quite rightly gave only one way to go. And Slight Holmes, very adept at taking the outside. And Radinsky will change his tactics that happen when that happens again. Conversion missed, but try number three. Lumsden. The other winger for Bath today. Adebayo. You see, the instinct in rugby union is to support the tackled man in rugby league. It goes the other way. And you don't learn another skill like that overnight. Now we always know it's going to be difficult, Miles, but uh, we're going to be in their own worst enemy. Two big chances that they've put the ground. They don't normally do that in an entire game of rugby league. Lamston again, got away from Twigamala this time. It'll be a great relief to him. Robinson, nicely up to Abubu. And Abubu goes. Robinson again the link. This is a Jomo. Sanders, Cat. And to Glanville putting it down, so Wigan will get the scrap. I just think there's too many bar players wanting to get hands on ball rather than do their day jobs. By that I mean support the ball carrier. When he goes to ground, make sure the ball's, you know, committed and they're committed especially, then they can pick up and just drive a bit closer to the to the game. The thing that surprised me, Jamie, is the fact that the forwards are taking so much control and there should be more of a link. There's Connolly. Cat just had a little flick at him as he went past, but... It's catching. Jonathan Callard. Well, it's not catching, if you see what I mean. The disease is rife, but... That was poor. Well, that's very unlike Jonathan Callard. Regulation high ball. He has those every day of the week, very comfortably indeed. But it gives Wigan the ball. They'll want it out quickly to try and launch these backs. Murdoch off to Leiden. Played regular rugby union. From the Schoolbury International rugby union, Joe Leiden. Here's a, here is again. Scott Quinnell, former Welsh international. Taken on by Tatupu. Good run now, he's got the ball as well. Tackle was good, but now it's O'Connor and Wigan are nearly there. West driving on. A fire is screaming for it out wide if they can move it. They might not even have to do that. But this time it's Bath's turn to hold up the Wigan attack. And the fire is furious because he was unmarked on this side. Yes, he is not happy at all, but a great drive. And what a story it would have been for Graham West to get over. Not to be. But then the second wave came, and they were just held up above the ground, so says Brian Campbell, the referee. That's the one each end, or a couple each end he's, he's, he's done today. And certainly from this resulting scrum, Wigan won't be going for a pushover, I can safely say. Good work, though, by Murdoch. 
good support play, kept the ball alive. But it was good defence also by Bath. You can see one of their players slipped right underneath Murdoch, make sure that it was impossible to ground the football. Well, Murdoch has scored in all four of Wigan's uh, latest Super League games. And in fact, scored against Bath, didn't he? In the meeting at Main Road. Now he'll want to get this ball in and out as quickly as possible. Bath would love another one against the head, but Murdoch has got it out. It's Radlinski. Here comes Paul. Was the support there quick enough? Quinnell did well. Good run from him. West once more. Now it's Murdoch. Connolly tries to clean it up. I fancy not that on. Twigger Marla is caught. The referee's letting it go. Connolly. Good defence. They converged on Connolly there. Wigan players were very slow to get back so they could pass the ball out. And here's a chance for Bath to move it. Canisins has space. Farrell just got him. Looked a little high. Slight home. Managed to hold on. But he lost all, lost all of the impetus out of his run. De Glanville, though. Slight home. Has another go. Adebayo. And here's Radlinski. <laughs> Twigamala fancies this. <laughs> Radlinski wants it again out wide, but he was all on his own, and Bath were covering well, but Bath getting over the top and giving away a penalty. And there's going to be some tired legs out here this afternoon with the pace of this game. But well played, Wigan, just the sort of ball they want. A bit too deep, really, to make big inroads into the Bath defence, but Radlinski and... Then Twigimala came back on the sitter, but it's uh, play on despite a couple of injured players hopping back into position. Farrell, just named as England captain, the youngest man ever to be given that honour. You can see the problem though that Wigan are very slow to help once the ball has been put the ground. That's where Bath really have got the control, they're poaching everything. Penalty bar. As Wigan were fringing around that ruck. The player has to come in from behind the back foot. Yes, indeed. As uh, Sean Edwards, the Wigan captain, not uh, playing today because of an injury, obviously. Looking on uh, the proceedings. A Jomo. I think that signals the end of kicks at goal from penalties. Bath having run this one, this is Cat. Meant for Lumsden, awkward for a fire. It's fallen nicely for Adi Adebayo to get another try. That was unfortunate for a fire. Well, just when you want a, a couple of good breaks for our Wigan. Uh, subject to a wicked bounce, and you have to say that good kick from Mike Cap, though, good option. A fire has to turn, but you can't cater for that in any in any game. You need all league. Nadebeo has the easy task of just dropping it over line. Just gets the fingertips to it, doesn't he? Martin a fire, but it was a lovely kick there. Cap kicking the ball, spinning it backwards. Good thinking, but well finished. Good support play by Adebeo. It really was an excellent try. Bad bounce, but let's not take anything away from the wonderful play from Cat. Callard misses with another kick. Yes, the rules may be a little bit different, but the ball's still the same shape. Yes, indeed, but it, it's a it's good vision by Mike Cat. It's good option taking. The fire, there was two on one anyway from the Bath players' point of view. But really, you have to have sympathy for Martin Afar in that situation.
Brighton gets us going again as we approach half time. Mike Cat with the touch find. Some thought the star of Main Road, Steve O. Did you feel that from a Bath point of view? Yes, I thought it was uh, very constructive. He tried hard. I thought the three internationals on show at Manchester showed their fitness too. They really would make uh, a damn good fist to turn it please. over to Rugby League. <laughs> Wigan cutting the line out. Well, it looked pretty. Nothing came of it, but it certainly looked nice. I think we'll go back to square one, shall we? <laughs> it's Martin Hall throwing. And Wigan have got this. Courtesy, I think, of a knock-on from Bath at that line-out. Some effective spoiling by Farrell. And Radlinski can try and do something. Connolly. Farrell again. Lovely movement from Farrell. What a gorgeous run this is. He's got support as well from Robinson. Twigamala's there. A fires across. Robinson comes back. And the referee says there's some interfering and offside, so we can get a penalty. Robinson caught well offside there. A bit pretty tired, Bath, getting back. Henry Paul to Tupu. Former Western Samoan Rugby Union International played in the World Cup last year in all of the Western Samoan games. Yes, but it's, it's a little passage of play that Wigan will be enjoying. Marvellous break from Andy Farrell. There he is there. Really was a terrific break. Great pace for a big man. Little dummy outside, straightens it up. Nigel Redmond coming across, realised he was going to come second very early in that piece. Just couldn't quite get Jason Robinson going on the right wing. And Farrell is still only 20, 21 next week. What a great prospect. Here he is again. Connolly got away from his man. Chance here. Henry Paul, bit of dazzling running from him. Oh, he almost got away. Still on, though. We can have a chance here out wide with Robinson if they can use him. It never quite got there. Leiden tried to get it across. Perhaps Leiden was looking for the man on the inside, Robinson. But Henry Paul, wonderful skills here. Nice step on the inside. The good work by Jonathan Callard just got to him in time. And I just thought perhaps that Leiden would have tried to bring Robinson back on the inside. Robinson just hesitated slightly. Driven on. And almost there. The referee again says no try. Well, very close indeed for Wigan. They would be delighted to get something on the board just before the, before half time. Once again, held up over the line. I'm sure of that. And this time it was Tatupu who was inches away from securing Wigan's first points in the game. But what Wigan are doing now is they're retaining possession. When they go into contact like Farrell beforehand, a fire was quickly in, retained possession. And that's what they've got to try and do. Wigan need to score before the half-time break. It will lift their confidence as they've seen the breaks now. It would lift the crowd as well. There would be quite a cheer. It's gone against the head though, isn't it? Cat knocking on. Oh dear from Mike Cat. This and a great position for Wigan. Not the best, was it? See, he took his eyes off the football. See that the Wigan players were coming down upon him. Well, seven points here. That could really just lift them for the break. Sort a few things out. And I get the impression that Graham West is struggling now. Surely he won't come out for the second half. Cornell went, Murdoch couldn't take. And it's Murdoch's turn to knock forward. I tell you what, Steve, though, talking about Graham West, for 42, he's done very well to last as many minutes. Tremendous effort. 
but uh, he has to realize now that you know, as the game progresses, both sides are going to get tired, and he must be suffering out there. And you get the feeling that Wigan are adjusting to the laws all the time. Feeling more comfortable. Robinson, Maisie running from him, a fire. Radlinski, support is out wide. It's Paul onto Connolly. Can Connolly make it? The referee has brought them back for a forward pass. It is a crying shame because it would have been a classic try. Well, I've been watching rugby union for years. I didn't know you had a forward pass, and that looked a okay to me. All right, you may say I'm biased, but that looked absolutely spot on. Superb play by Wigan. Well, it was right on the margin, that decision. Cat. Well, it was obviously a close ball call for Brian Pants on that. Just forget the ball for a minute and have a look outside the touchline at the, the, the touch touch Stuart Pearce. It just comes across. The pass goes from Henry Paul. And you'll see the touch judge say, look, look at his hand. He's saying forward, forward. He's linking with the referee. So that's the communication aspect. That's fair enough. That's what the touch judges are there for. So because of that, Wigan go to half-time with no points on the board. But it was mighty close. And Connolly knew that he almost had a moment to remember. But it's Bath who lead 25 points to nil. And we're back after the break. Second period. A game which has sparked much debate. And they're still talking all around us about various incidents in that first half, particularly the alleged forward pass. I should also say that we hear from down on the pitch that Brian Campbell in conjunction with his touch judge, they've offered the view that the pass was at least a yard forward. I'd hate him to quote from my carpet. Good drive from Bath. And they keep it on the move until Sanders elects to get the backs moving. De Glanville's kick. Radlinski comes across, it's another cruel bounce, Adi Adebayo is there again, left it behind for De Glanville, but it was Connolly who reacted first, and then Paul who put it into touch. It was a wicked bounce again though. Well, they've had two wicked bounces now at Wigan, but it was a marvellous forward drive from Bath. It really was, and Wigan really had no answer to it, you wouldn't expect them to, to be fair. And certainly, Bath have started this second half, knowing they've got to put a few more points on the board. Frederick Lamble's just, just left the field. He's got a, a blood injury, I think. Should also say that Twiga Marla has moved out of the pack to play in the backs for this second half. Now, here's a story. Joe Ewans has come on to play for Bath. He's still at school, still at Colston School. A great prospect, he's the England schoolboys captain, and there's his teacher at school, Andy Robinson at Colston's. So I wonder how young Joe Ewans is feeling. He was showing the ball there, but not giving it. Slight home. Well pinched by the Wigan players then. They worked hard. They stole the ball, they should come up with possession, but has it gone back again? Ball was on the floor, so Bath get the put in. Had a good position for Bar two, right smack in front of the post, go either way, and this will test the back row defence of, of Wigan. A Germo. Of course, the players have to stay down now with the new law. Stay bound at the scrum until the scrum is over. This is Cat. It was a lovely pickup. It was a beautiful run. What a good try from Mike Cat. 
Yes, it certainly was. He really is beginning to dictate at that, the fly half position now. His second phase ball, and Mike Katz saw it, a huge out overlap. A fire was faced with three Bath players. And Mike Cat goes over without a hand laid on him. Super play. You can see how he uses the dummy runner coming back on the inside. You see that Craig Murdoch hesitated, and it's enough for this guy. His class, that there is no doubt. Mike Cat running the angles, used the dummy runner, absolutely wonderful. Craig Murdoch fell for him. And Callard has rediscovered his kicking form. It was a difficult one, but he judged it well, and Mike Katz's try is one to remember. Yes, it cer certainly is. He's got pace too, Mike Cat. The fire was left just hanging on the outside for Lumsden. And Abugu looks to be uh, leaving the field now. So Victor Abugu goes off. Neil McCarthy has come on has been playing at Hawker but did use to prop so there's no major problem for him there England under 21 international here's Ed Pierce he's only 20 Cat he started the second half well until that moment Murdoch Farrell Twigamala where he's so dangerous, of course, out wide. Henry Paul. Twigamala again, beaten one. Joe Ewins went back for further punishment, but he did well. Graham Dorr goes for Bath. Now there's a chance. John Callard. Lumsden's there. Has he got the pace to go all the way? He needed support. And it came from Ewans. He's made quite a start. It's Cat. Another dummy from Cat, and he was almost away. Robinson. A bit tight for slight home. Has to bring it back to Sanders. But Bath keeping it alive well and showing their handling skills. Here's Ewans. just denied but it's Wigan who denied Bath possession and concede a penalty would have been a dream for the youngster there Joe Ewans went so close and it was the youngster that actually got involved with the big fella Vaiga Twigamala is the man that got hold of the ball and Twigamala lost the ball way downfield Well, what a start for Joe Ewins, but the party could just about be at an end for him as Phil de Glanville returns after receiving treatment. Yes, but it's, uh, it's a wonderful five or ten minutes that he's had on the field, and he'll cherish that for some time. Robinson always sets it back beautifully. De Glanville straight back into the action. Still going, Phil de Glanville. That's a try. So strong in the challenge, Phil de Glanville. He's not a big man, but he's got great strength. Yes, he certainly has. And if he sees a gap, he'll go absolutely for it. Once again, the cover defence of Wigan hesitated. Robinson just deciding, then undecided as to whether to come in, stay out. What do I do? Betwixt and between, really. And de Glanville forces himself over. All class, isn't it? That really was a good angle run, but a tremendous service from the ruck there. Quick pass, gave him the chance and the opportunity out wide. So Scott Quinnell is leaving the field now. He's been struggling with injury lately. Caught a muscle in the sevens. And his place will go to Simon Horton, but here's John Callard. Oh, straight through the middle. Well, Wigan losing one of their rugby union men, which uh, isn't going to help their cause at all. Scott Cornell goes off and Simon Horton comes on. And I dare say the Wigan coach will want to play <laughs> the power of game now and say, hold on, boys, you don't leave me out here all game, are you? 
but it's been very constructive play by Bath in the second half. They're using the forwards. They know they've got the strength there, and they're just sucking the players midfield. And when you've got the class of the Glanville out wide, they're really making it pay. Nice kick to <laughs> Wigan looking for the quick one, but they may have put themselves in all kinds of trouble here as Ed Pierce went through. Twigamala, he tried to do the sensible thing, but he backfired there for Wigan. Yes, indeed, it, it did. And they just in, indecision, and Bath were certainly following up. Good tactics for Wigan, though. There's no point having the the normal line out but they just couldn't quite get the ball away and there's all three men around Twiggy Amala there great defense applying the pressure all the time so Graham West now leaves Twickenham what a brave effort from him and I spoke to him last night he said look my inclusion in the side doesn't mean that we're not taking this seriously I'm really up for this game and I want to play well, and I've been keeping myself fit. Well, you proved a point out there today, I think. Yep. A point that he'll be very sore in the morning as well, but uh, full credit to him. As we mentioned before the game, the thing that impressed me at Manchester was the fact, the spirit that it was played, and we've seen it happen again today. It really has been played in a wonderful spirit. starting to take its toll on Wigan. As is this rolling ball. And Bath almost there now. Sanders, the scrum half, goes in to add extra weight. And as the ball collapses, the referee, quite rightly, for safety reasons pulls them back for a scrum but it will be a Bath put in yes I think Bath now having obviously you know comfortably secured this game 39 points up there's no point proving any any pointers in the scrum now just get it in get it out and let's see some back play couldn't agree with you more there well it's the back row move and a Joe move and to be fair to Bath that's exactly what they did they just rested on that scrum we're not going to punish Wigan right to the end of the scrummage. Nice break, though. Plenty of strength. Go underneath the man. That was good work. Really trying hard, but he's a big man to stop. He's enjoyed himself today. Steve Ajomo has also threatened to go into his work on Monday morning if Bath lose in just his boxer shorts. Well, I'm glad they're winning. I don't think that would be a pretty <laughs> sight. I noticed your bet was more concerned with money than <laughs> boxer shorts. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to uh, purchase boxer shorts. Bath look as though they've got this well and truly under control the second half. Let's see some three quarter play now, though. So Jomo again at the base of the scrum, controlling well. Sanders gets it away. Cat, De Glamble, Callard, and Slightholm. They all want to touch. It's Slightholm with the break, but it could be Wigan with the break now as a fireball chase. But the ball beats everybody. Well, they left it too late to use the back bar. They went for the pushover. Didn't work. Credit to Wigan for not collapsing to that scrum. They've easily gone down. Ball goes loose, and quite rightly, Wigan. It'd be nice to see Marshall Fire have a go, wouldn't it? I think all the crowd was disappointed there that the ball did finally go into touch. Not many opportunities. And that's come about by the tremendous pressure and defence. I have been impressed with the way that Bath have moved up. They put the pressure under on Wigan. We really have not got started in the second stanza. The game as a spectacle just has to open up, though, now. Well, one would expect so, wouldn't Miles, at 39-0. I think the crowd are wanting to see the Union side rub it in. Why not? We did the same at uh, Manchester. The platform is there, and away goes Callard. Lovely running from Callard. 
ball going forward. Yes, just this last five minutes or so, the tendency is to be from VAR. And you can understand it in a way to go for the back row move, but they have got the backs, and when we see them, it's been a delight. Yes, indeed, and, and John Callard, the gaps are opening up. There's, there's space to be had now for these VAR backs, and certainly they must make full use of it. Cat. Adi Adebayo brings in Lumsden. Wigan killing the ball. Played hard, Twigamala. So we can see that they're going through the repertoire of uh, moves. Crisscross bringing the winger in. Well matched by Wigan on that occasion, but they did kill the ball. Robinson. De Glanville. Yates. So disappointed to miss out on the cup final. De Glanville. And where did that come flying from? It was taken by a fire. And the upshot could well be a clear overlap here for Wigan. Bradlinski has seen it. Henry Paul. A fire. Great chance here. He's got Murdoch with him. And Murdoch is going to go. And Murdoch is going to score. From their own line. Well, they've waited a long time. It was good work right from behind their own sticks. And Paul back on the inside. A fire did the right thing. Good support play, though, by Craig Murdoch. And nothing was going to go and stop him. Determination there. He'll remember that for a long time. Craig Murdoch in at the corner. Martin a fire. It was good defense. They covered well. But they ran out of numbers. Well down the little halfback, Craig Murdoch. Great try, length of the field. Well, it doesn't matter what code you support, Union or League, that was a wonderful try from Wigan to go the whole length of the field with the hands they showed, the lines of running they showed. Berlinski a little bit across to start with, but certainly they know how to finish this Wigan side when they're going to slip of the line. And that really has brought the house down, it really has. They a crowd to a man, lady and child were up on their feet, supporting that, that Wigan try. So it's Andrew Farrell with the conversion. It's a nice strike, but not quite the direction. So Wigan have to settle with the try, but it was a good one. John Slightham is discussing whether he should leave the field. He's just been receiving some treatment. I think young Joe Ewans has got his taxi off wanting to have a bit more of top class rugby. <laughs> and why not? He enjoyed his uh, few minutes out there on the big park. Slightham leaves the field. Yes, he was fair sprinting down Joe Ewans to take part again. John Slightone limps off, he will get a rest now. And no doubt return next season. And not just a Bath, but England jersey. And a great first season in international rugby. Cat. The tester, the high ball. The glamble all over Redlinski. And the penalty is given. Well, it's the first up and under we've seen all afternoon. A good one, too. But Wigan did well. They blocked the Glanville going through, quite rightly. He didn't like it too much and jumped far too early. Now they could bath counter. It's the fresh legs of Joe Ewins, first to get back there. And the Campisi-style skip away from Ewins, and he finds hard. He continues to impress, doesn't he? 
Plenty of tell there. Taken a knock there, though. Yep. Got one for his corner. Got taken out. But it was a nice break. Got plenty of pace. No break there from De Glanville as Farrell was quickly up. Sanders, Cat. They missed out Robinson to give it to the pace of Adi Adebayo. But there was another Robinson, Jason Robinson, who was covering. Ewans is back on his feet. And he had a Bayo is wondering just how he couldn't wriggle away. It's been a good battle, hasn't it? The two wingers and a Bayo, Jason Robinson. See, offered him the outside run. Touchline became his friend. Twigamala. Connolly. A fire. Will this be a fire's run? Well, he got support from Radlinski. And now it's Radlinski on Adebayo. And it was a good race as well. Adebayo must make it available, although Radlinski went down on him. And it's because of that that we have a penalty, and it goes to Bar. Absolutely right. right. Absolutely right, Marsh. Adebayo, as he goes back, he cannot... The player following cannot dive on, on him. He must allow him to stand up. He must stay on his feet, Radlinski. You know, there's no way that... Adebayo can play the ball there at all. Well, I'm sure that's one of the finer points that uh, Redlinski wouldn't know. Yeah, there's no reason why he should, probably. And, no. uh, you know, he, the poor lad, he'd run 70 yards in his own kick. He wanted to do something when he got there. Yeah, it's pretty difficult to run that far and then just stand there. Yeah, but he just stands and just gets the ball of yeah. Adebayo. If Adebayo doesn't release, then obviously it's a penalty against him. Graham Dor to throw to this line out. Dor missed the first match, so he was itching to go in this one. Been some tremendous uh, jumping though, hasn't there, from Nigel Redmond? He really is a master at that art. Ewans with the kick through. The more experienced De Glamble, his skipper, chasing, but it's Radlinski who goes back just concedes possession John Callard well caught by replacement Simon Horton who's another Wigan player with rugby union experience he was a schoolboy international here's Mike Cat Adebayo Robinson there staying on his feet disproving that it is possible take the breakdown this is Cat nice little chip But some hands on the floor from Dart. And the penalty goes Wigan's way. Here's Farrell. Arms pumping. They're calling for it inside. Robinson is chasing through. Ewans is trying to get back. Murdoch is there as well. But it was Joe Ewans and Phil de Glamble also who went back there. And it was de Glamble who got hands on it. Tremendous work by the Bath skipper. But good support play. Farrell kicked the ball through. Robinson. But great work by the skipper, Phil de Glanville. He's had a fine game. He's shown his class today. Stuart, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think another man who's shown his class today is Andy Farrell. Great pace, sees the gap, takes it well, and he's got a great football in brain, as that kick illustrated. What a player. Taken by Pierce from that restart. Robinson. Cat. Awkward for Radlinski. Better bounce this time. But this is a familiar situation for Radlinski to run from deep. And he supports well. Henry Paul. He's got a bit of glue on the end of those fingers. And the dancing shoes are working as well. The penalty to follow. I'm sure he was offside on that position. Robinson was in an offside. Wigan starting to play well here with Simon Horton going. It's been a good period for Wigan. Connolly and 
and there's the extra man. It was Cassidy. But it led to the knock-on. Mick Cassidy there. Great play by Wigan, keeping the ball alive. The crowd like this. Nice inside pass there from Connolly. Cassidy trying to get it away, and you can see that it was a bath fingertip that got to it. But I don't think that's been picked up by the referee. Give them head and feed with Bath side. Head and feed. You know what I mean, Miles. Sanders. Well, Bath taking the easy option there. This as we said before, going to be some tight legs out there. I think it's quite right that Bath have, have stopped scrummaging. Wigan certainly did Bath a few favours in the latter stages up at Main Road the other week, so uh, Bath are returning the compliment now. They've made their point about the scrummaging. Well, I think the crowd want to look forward to uh, expansive open football. It just shows you what Wigan could have done, perhaps, if they would have got possession, but I'd love to see the possession stats. Must be horrendous, really. I mean, the, the amount of ball that Bath have had and controlled, it's been a fine effort from them. And penalty goes Wigan's way there. Bath were killing it. This is Farrell again. Starting to really take control, Farrell, in those situations. But it's easy for Callard. And here, the referee can give, if we look at Sean Edwards there, Interesting point as Wigan put the ball dead. Bath can ask for the put into the scrum on their own 22 instead of take the drop out. They have the drop out option. Yes, that's right. We've seen that in the Super 12s that uh, I'm sure people have been following that you have this option, and I'm pretty sure that most sides will go for the scrummage option. Henry Paul, Farrell, Twigamala gets away from one and he's still going, they'll never get him. As sure as night follows day, Twigamala gets those. Tremendous player by Iga Twigamala, but good work by the Wigan forwards. They got the ball spun it out wide, took the risk for such a big man poetry in motion, the lovely step and the strength, Farrell was at a superb game there you can see the hesitation the youngster on this occasion no match for him just shrugs him away sheer strength there but here you see where they've pinched the ball yes but once it got back it was certainly very much on, and Wigan knew it. It's the wide ball here. Now, as you freeze it there, look how this man here, he's, he's betwixt and between. He doesn't know whether to go for Twigimala or not. Takes a sensible option and doesn't, probably. <laughs> but I tell you what, there's a few checkbooks around in rugby union at the moment. You're going to need an awfully big one to lure this chap away from Central Park, I'd imagine. Yep, you're spot on there. He's probably the best in the world in both codes. Farrell successful with the conversion. We're going to have 12 points. Bath lead 39 12. Well, here's the finish of this move again. And you're talking power, you're talking pace, you're talking body strength as well. He's a great class act. Wonderful player. But Jamie's point, Steve-O, about Bath just letting up a little bit at the scrum, it's a valid one, isn't it? Oh, of course, it's, uh, they've been controlling it. But the crowd want to see you up in football now. It's been a great celebration, and we're going to get it. With Twigamala going again, John Callard is the last line of defence, although Bath getting men back there now, and Callard just did enough to put Twigamala off his stride. Well, it was a great run by Twigamala, but he really should have offloaded the football. He thought perhaps he had the strength, and you could see that he's not happy with it. And Connolly and Robinson in support. 
And really, he should have been looking to twist in the tackle and keep that ball alive. He knows it too. The second half score looked at in isolation 14 12 to Bath. So a much better performance by Wigan in this period. Ironic, Bath have gone back to the old tactic. The nerves, perhaps. What a 39 12. I don't think it's quite that, Steve, to be frank with you. No, they're nervous at the crowd giving them the bird. I think that's what it is. They really have controlled it, haven't they? It's, uh, it's been a good spectacle to watch. I think the good thing is, too, we, we, we've seen all sides of the Union game. It is a game of ruts and walls and lineouts and scrums, whether you like it or not. And certainly your components have been shown by Bath here today. And, and Wigan have obviously added some great gloss to it by the, the two wonderful tries that they've scored so far. So just over 10 minutes to go, and Bath will be looking to finish on a high. Redmond, Cat, De Glamble. It's looked dangerous, but not that time. Swallowed up. Pierce. Sanders again. Cat. And here's Adi Adebayo. Had a fine match. Saunders tapping and going. Wigan not 10 metres. Robinson alive to the threat. It's with Graham Dorr. And he felt that from Terry O'Connor. That's what we call a crunch hit. And bang. Oof. Well, it's been deemed a dangerous tackle. The penalty has been given. Well, I thought the hands, if they were touching the body, that's deemed as a OK tackle. Jamie, uh, perhaps you could explain it to me. Well, you've got to use the hands to try and get hold of the body. That's the difference. That's what constitutes a tackle. And Bath took the scrum again from the penalty. They're without Adi Bay at the moment, who's down injured, but they probably won't need him if the forwards continue to do work like this. The referee has given the try. He was on the verge of giving a penalty try. But the try was given, and Bath have reasserted their dominance. Well, certainly not the way that this crowd wanted that. And they would have rather have seen a wonderful flourish from the back three quarters. Well, it was easy in the end for Ian Saunders, but feeling the pain is Adi Adebayo. Got one in the ribs. And that means Rich Buckland has come onto the field. Yes, it's the end of a long season, and Adebayo, who's had a wonderful season, sadly departs, injured. And uh, the season couldn't end soon enough, I don't think, these Bath lads going since last well, pre-season training, late July, August last year. So uh, they deserve a pretty good rest over this summer. Graham Dorr has also come off as we watch Callard's kick drift wide. that challenge of that there's no doubt but he seems to have felt a twinge at the back of the leg yeah, I think it's a hamstring problem it's uh, finally taken him off the field club customer been impressed with his uh, his work industrious to say the least and Gary French is on his father Ray a dual international in league and union to Glamble Wigan's tactics there, kicking the ball deep in the hope perhaps that the kick wasn't all that good. 
really has been the only way that we're going to have gained possession when the kicking from Bath hasn't been excellent. Phil to Glanville. The latest to suffer as French, the new boy, goes through. But it went forward. Wigan ball. It's been fast and furious, and it's taken its toll. Yes, it certainly has, and uh, yeah, the crowd will certainly have enjoyed this as we wait for another change, I think, in the, uh, the players as the scrum starts. Charlie Harrison's come on for Bath, and he will be required here because away goes Radlinski. Connolly, and it's Harrison who's trying to track back, but it's a fire who gets in. Robinson out to Connolly again, and in the end, there were enough Bath men but we can keep on coming. And De Glanville's off the floor there. And you've got to ask how many players have Bath got on the field. Isn't that loitering with intent? We've had 13 aside, 15 aside. Why not 16 aside? Well, De Glanville's now gone down injured again. So having intercepted that that Wigan move, he's he stopped that, and uh, down he goes again. Here he is, he's left the physio, I'll take that, stop this attack of Wiggins, keep the ball going our way, and he's now still receiving treatment from the physiotherapist. Quick thinking. Charlie Harrison is being told just to wait until he's caught onto the field. Phil de Glanville's staying on. Well, if it isn't bad enough for Wigan as it is with 15, Bath having 16. Not that I'd make that an excuse, Miles. <laughs> it's Redmond. It's been a thoroughly entertaining afternoon. As always, games like this just require that piece of action at the end that you can take away to the car park or the train station. Well, it would be nice to finish off with a flourish. Try from either side. Love to see a fire get a good run. Another replacement. Andrew Craig replaces Radlinski. Craig, normally a fullback, also plays wing and centre. So many of these Wigan players are versatile and can slot into any position in their own code. Sanders, Cat, Ewans, could see Twigamala bearing down and he did well to step out of it. Here goes Robinson, Buckland. And a long blast from the referee, he wants it to calm down, he wants to end on a sour note. Bath get a penalty. Good play though by Bath, they kept that ball alive. Hello. Super stuff, quick hands. Robinson has a Jomo with him. But he went forward. I think it's, it's obviously getting a bit uh, casual at the moment, but I think Bath would like to get 50 on the board. I'm sure they would. Robinson wanted get there quick pass to the Jomu Paul running into the post but still finding Connolly here's Twigamala and here's Robinson and he's away now he's got support back inside again it's from Murdoch and Murdoch's going to go for it and he's going to get the race to go his way to finish off another move from behind the Wigan line oh yes A tired looking Craig Murdoch on the second occasion, but good adventurous play. Something that you would never dream of doing in rugby league, playing safety first in that area, but 
they know they have that little possession and look at this man go unselfish ball back on the inside from Robinson Murdoch who's had a fine game came in for the injured Sean Edwards he certainly can hold his head up high that's a fine try great return to Twickenham for Twigamala last played here of course with the All Blacks well it's not often you see two tries that are scored from so deep behind their own try line twice Wigan have scored tries from today the pace in their side is, is quite outstanding and uh, Twigimala just uh, explaining this the reserve match referee Chris Reese what he's about but I think we're gonna won the second half <laughs> yes it was 25 nil at half time Wigan had a couple more points to make it far 44 Wigan 19 Jamie your man of the match well my statement across the man of the match today is uh, Andy Robinson I think once again he, he's shown how useful a link man is and the manner in which he plays it and I just admire his attitude to the game of rugby union and his commitment to his club and that's it Bath have won by 44 points to 19 it was a convincing victory because of their power up front but certainly in the second half when Wigan moved it out wide once again we saw the true quality in their side especially when it comes